Hey everybody, remember I told you we were about to do a review on this book. I only read the first two chapters, so we're about to learn about one of the characters. Her name is Zeely. You'll see her coming up now. Okay, you guys, this is my vision for how I expect her to look um, just by starting out reading the chapter. Dark complexion, beautiful girl, long, white, curly hair. Okay, guys, so the beginning of the chapter consists of them sitting in their um, training, right? And they're basically like acting as if they're seamstress. So they're supposed to be like learning how to sew by Mama Agba. Um, Mama Agba is also a sewer and she is teaching them how to sew but she's also teaching them how to be warriors, to be able to protect themselves if the war ever happens again. So I'm going to get more in depth about the chapter and talk to you guys about the war. But this is Mama, Leg Mama Alba. <laughs> so Zeely is all excited. She's ready to go into battle because she's ready to graduate. So she's like fierce. She's ready to, you know, have her first, you know, battle where she can graduate to her next level, right? So she's like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. She's eager. I'm ready. She's like, Mama, pick me. Pick me. I'm ready to go into battle. So Mama say, Zeely, it's your time to prepare for battle. But then she then calls her opponent. Her opponent is Yimmy. And I'm going to show you guys Yimmy. Here's my interpretation of Yimmy. Um, the book described her as coconut skin, long black hair, beautiful radiant eyes that shows confidence. This is Yimmy. Zeely started to get like nervous within and didn't want to get up to fight Yimmy. So mama was like, um, if you don't want to get up and fight, I can pick somebody else. So she got up. And the reason why she was kind of feeling a little insecure about fighting her was because Yimmy is a full Orishan child, right? And they look at the ones with the white hair. They call them diviners. It's kind of like saying that they're beneath them basically and Yimmy always wins okay so once she seen that mama wasn't playing with her she jumped up and she was like I'm fine I'm ready I can do this I am not scared of her I'm going to show her that I can graduate and move up in my rank basically so they started to battle so Yimmy just stood there and bowed whatever because with confidence and like she had a smirk on her face like, girl, I already know I'm about to beat you. Because first and foremost, I already graduated. And I'm Yimmy. I'm that girl. And I just love it. I love it. Y'all, I love it. I love it. <laughs> so Zilly didn't want to bow because she was just being, you know, a butthole. Because she saw the smirk and she just was like, why do I have to bow to her? And mama was like, if you don't bow, you will not battle. So she just went on and bowed, but she didn't do it because she wanted to. She just went on and did it. Mama said, commence. And then the girl started fighting. Yelly jumped out instantly with the fence. She whips out her um her staff and she started, you know, doing all of her tricks and flips and everything and hitting and moving and switching and doing everything, you know, just doing all that stuff. And all Yemi did was just move backwards and did a spin and hit Zilly in the back of her neck with the staff. The other girls was gasping like, oh, wow. <laughs> Zilly was like, you got to be quicker than that. So she started doing flips and everything. Yemi thought she was going to be able to keep hitting her and keep swinging her, swinging her staff. But Yemi was like rolling and flipping and back flipping, arching her back, dodging all of the licks. She was like, you're not going to hit me again, period. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so Yemi, seeing that Zilly was, like, really into her craft and she was really, like, about to really win, so she decided to use a slur to her by calling her, you diviner. And that built up rage inside of Zilly. Zilly started to attack. It was over then. Mama Agba was like, no, Zilly, you are not on offensive now. You are on defense. So if, they didn't hear none of that. So they were just going at it left to right, left to right. The staffs was just banging up against each other. She was stopping her legs. She was stopping her legs. They were flipping and flopping and just battle all together like full force. I love it. I love it. I love it. I just, y'all just don't understand like how it was going in. When Zilly would throw her, her, you know, do one of her poses to, to hit the staff, um, Yemi would hit her staff and they'll block it to the point that they knock it out, of, knock one of them out of the hand. Um, Yemi would do a back flip and flip over and to go get her staff and then, you know, just back and forth, back and forth. I'll be the last one left when the lights go out I'm down to one last breath but I can't stop now We all fall down sometimes, yeah but that's just life So cross my heart and hope to die, baby I was born to f Fight the fear when I feel like dying I'm trying to fly high but I'm not a pilot Can't deny it, there's some days I feel idiotic Just a product of a system where you're lucky Just to make a dollar That ain't gonna stop me cause my grind's contagious I'll do what it takes to turn passion to paychecks And if I go down, I'ma do it on my terms And every single problem brings the lesson that I learned to die. Okay y'all, so finally Mama was like, enough You know, and they stopped But the reason it happened Because Zeely brother ran in. I tried to, it's too late, it's too late. Mama was like, it's too late for what, child? What happened, what happened? He was like, the soldiers, they're on their way. The guards, they're on their way. So they didn't have time, much time to hurry up and clear up the mats and get everything up. But they got into it just in time. So everybody ended up at their stations as if they were just there to learn to be seamstress, right? So the guards come in with their ugly selves talking about, we're here for payments, time to get your taxes, pay your taxes. So mama was like, we already paid our taxes this, this week. He was like, it's more taxes for the defenders. My bad, y'all, I mean um, diviners. And she was like, what do you mean more taxes for the diviners? And he was like, um, it's more taxes, you know why, or whatever. So basically, they're just taxing them because she's helping my so mama was like, I don't have any more money. I just paid my taxes. I paid everything. I don't have anything else to give. And um, she was just like, I don't have, I can't keep paying these taxes. I don't have it. I don't have it to give. So Zilly was like, she already paid you guys taxes for a diviner, which, which she knew they were talking about her. And mama was like, be quiet. She was like, no, you can't keep just taking all the money from her. You can't keep doing that. You know, like she started defending mama and the um, guards was like, oh, we can take you out of here and we, she doesn't have to pay anything. You can pay off her debts by becoming one of the workers at the palace. Mama was like, no, no, I got the money. So she just started digging into her um, pockets and she gave them all of the money that she had. And he was like, yeah, next time if it's not enough, we'll take her. For collateral. <sighs> Zilly was thinking like the whole time. Boy don't you know I'll kill you. <laughs> the guards was like. That ain't even enough. That ain't even enough. That ain't even enough. You know they like. They was just. That's not enough. You know because. Um, Yili was already. Talking. You know being defiant and whatever. So. She was. Um, play, basically at that time they had her down pressed down on the ground or whatever, like they wanted to kill her and hurt her. And um, she, mama was like, I promise you I have a, I'll have more, you know, next time you guys come, you know. Mama took the money and like put it in their hands, like all the coins she just kept putting in their hands. So they decided that they were gonna go ahead and let it go until they meet again, basically. So um, the guard let um, Zilly up and Zilly was just looking at him like, Again, like, he just don't know. He just don't know. <laughs> he 
he just do not know. But, um, yeah, so we go on to the next scene. Mama let all the other girls go, and she made Zeely stay back. And she wanted to have a talk with Zeely. Zeely immediately thought she was about to get in trouble, like in a thrashing. She did get fussed at for now keeping her mouth closed with the guards, but Mama wanted to let her know that she graduated, and she also gave her one of her swords. And she wanted to just let her know every time she looks at her, she sees her mother. Um, Zeely mom passed away due to the riot that happened before um, the colonizers took over the land. So you'll get, I'm going to get more into that later, but we're going to go to the next scene. So even though Zeely just got this good news, her brother ran to her. His name is T-Zane. He was running to her and saying, it's Papa. And that immediately made her get into a panic. So she took off running towards the village, jumping over boats, fruit places, everything, just to get to her dad. At the same time, fussing at her brother because she was like, you were supposed to stay with him until I left from Mama Abba um, lessons. You know, she was just mad. He was just running behind her saying, you're not listening to me. You're not listening to me. And she was just like, I don't care. You don't, you weren't supposed to leave, Papa. You wasn't supposed to leave him. I was told you I was going to be right back. You know, you wasn't supposed to leave him. So they make it to where their father is, and she sees a crowd of people. And she immediately went into panic. Before she can even get a full thought in, her brother takes off in full force, jumps into the water where his father was being knocked down by the waves. And went underwater with his father, but ended up pulling his father and himself out of the water to the surface. As her father and her brother catch their breath on the side of the surface, um, and they got her, brother, got her father and her brother, you know, dried off and calmed down, she started asking questions. Her father was like, soldiers came, told me that I had to pay more taxes, so I would try to go fish on my own. She was like, the soldiers just came to Mama, um, Seamary's place as well. The soldier was basically telling him that if he didn't pay the new taxes for having a diviner in his home, they will come and take Zilly. So Zilly was like really upset. She did not want her family to know it. She was hiding that she was fearful in the inside, at the same time fierce in the inside because she felt like they're picking at anybody to help her and they're trying to hurt her family. And she wasn't having that. Okay, you guys, so that is the end of chapter one and two. That was about Zilly um, for children in blood and bone. Basically, this book is basically talking about how the colonizers came in and took over this um, country and took their powers. Um, they raided the country. Um, all of the people that had powers, they... Um, basically were murdered in front of their family and loved ones and the only ones that they don't that they know had powers were the ones with the white hair so that's why they treat Zeely that way so that's why they keep calling her a diviner and it's kind of kind of weird to me because even people of her own make fun of her as well but um yeah so we're gonna start on the next chapter my bad you guys but basically that was the story for the first two chapters it was about Zilly. so i'll be coming back in talking about the next few chapters after this and i'm gonna just keep bringing in videos i'll see y'all peace